Start the live with one intention. You have one intention that you are going to deliver throughout this live. Make it very clear in the title and the description of the Facebook Live what your intention is. And don't deviate from that. You should be looking with any Facebook Live to be solving one problem. You are looking to create a solution to one specific problem, obstacle, struggle, challenge, whatever that might be. Thank you for tuning in to Agile Digital Business. You are listening to episode 33. I am your host, Vicki Maris. I'm a published author, speaker, digital marketer, and coach, helping you maintain relevant communications with your customers, clients, and students. Right now, we are particularly focused on times of disruption. In season three of the show, I'm sharing ideas with you as you lead your organization through adoption and uses of live streaming and improve your ways of engaging with your customers in social media and work with other techniques for hearing their voice. I believe it is so important to listen to the voice of your customer and incorporate their input in the plans that you are making for the future. This episode of Agile Digital Business is sponsored by Teach, Inspire, Connect. I have an online coaching group starting on a regular basis and also provide online one-on-one coaching. The focus of the group coaching and one-on-one coaching is currently around the uses of Facebook Live for connecting with your audience and in using techniques for social media engagement. Please fill out the short application at my website, vickimaris.com, if you're interested in talking with me further about the next coaching group that's coming up, about live streaming and its uses in your overall communications and social media engagement strategy. Before we head into the main content for this episode, which is my interview with John Lee Dumas, I would like to challenge you with the question, are your products or services or the content that you're producing relevant to your customers, clients, or students' needs today amidst all this change? I recently was reading a new ebook written by Mark Schaefer, marketer, coach, speaker, and author of many books, including Marketing Rebellion, The Most Human Company Wins. Mark was my guest for episode 29 of this podcast, If you haven't yet listened to the insights and wisdom he shared in our conversation, I encourage you to do so. I contacted him and asked if he would give me permission to read an excerpt from this new ebook here on the show, and he said, by all means. Thank you, Mark. He talks about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how it is important to be meeting our customers where they are in that hierarchy. If they are at the bottom seeking physiological needs such as air, food, water, shelter, sleep, clothing, and reproduction, but we're working to produce solutions for people who are at the top of the pyramid or some other place in the pyramid. The top is the self-actualization section where we are desiring to become the most that we can be. If that's where we're providing products and services or content, then it's an important moment to make a pivot and seek out ways to align the solutions that we're providing to our customers within the needs and pain points they are currently experiencing. Here is one of the short stories that Mark included in his new ebook, The Pandemic Business Playbook. I will include the link to the playbook for you. It's a free download from his website, businessesgrow.com. Here's just a short excerpt. The long-term relevance of the brand is more important than short-term sales. I understand why some small businesses are desperate right now and might feel compelled to sell, 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 even if it's not relevant. Our dreams have been dashed by an invisible enemy. But no amount of advertising, discounting, or content marketing will matter if your audience is at the bottom of the pyramid and you're still selling at the top. You're irrelevant. You need to stop. 
end quote. This is a story that, that Mark has shared from his past. Quote, Early in my career, I was a sales leader for a big company called Alcoa. At that time, Alcoa was a Fortune 100 company, a Dow Jones industrial blue chip company, and a very well-run company. I had a great experience with my career there and learned from great leaders. One time when I was a sales manager, we were having terrible quality problems with one of our customers. It was so bad, and I'm going to add brackets on our end, that we were shutting them down. They were missing their delivery shipments. And so I had lunch with the president of the company, and I said to him, quote, We are doing such a bad job for you right now. We're struggling to keep you supplied. We appreciate that we have 100% of your business, but at this point, why aren't you going to a competitor? And he said, well, let me tell you about our history with Alcoa. My company was started by my father, and during World War II, we almost went out of business because the products we made were not relevant anymore during that crisis. We had to retool and reinvent ourselves for the war effort. We were running out of cash, we were running out of time, and Alcoa, our aluminum supplier at that time, came to our rescue and they helped us in this moment of crisis. They helped us retool our plant. They gave us the technical support to pivot in this time. They even helped finance some of the equipment that we needed to survive. My father, the person who founded this company, as he was dying in the hospital, said to me, never leave Alcoa. They brought us to the dance. They made us who we are today. And that's why we stuck with you, even when we were having hard times. End quote. That was a very powerful lesson to me. Through generosity in hard times, Alcoa had built loyalty that spanned decades and generations. I'm continuing on here with the rest of this section, so I'm still quoting Mark Schaefer's ebook. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I'm not that kind of person. There's a lot of rah-rah stuff out there about don't be afraid and don't be frightened. And if you're afraid, you're just playing into the victim mentality. The fact is there are people who aren't going to make it to the other side. But here's the opportunity and here is the vision of this time that we're in for any business. We have to put ourselves in the mindset of fighting to the other side, but doing it in a way like Alcoa did. End quote. Mark, thanks again for letting me share that excerpt out of your ebook. To lead into the section with my interview with John Lee Dumas, I'd like to share a review that's been posted in Apple Podcasts for this podcast, Agile Digital Business, by Reed Styles timely topic and very relevant topics. Stumbled upon the ADB podcast and really enjoyed Peter Delisle's interview. Subscribed. Well, thank you, Reed Styles. I appreciate your subscription and appreciate you taking the time to write a review and share a rating for the show. If you would like to join Reed and others who have provided honest ratings and reviews of this podcast, I sure do appreciate it. You can do that in Apple Podcasts within the app or wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. And now, here is my interview with John Lee Dumas. JLD is on the mic. I think of this man as a master of financial and lifestyle freedom. John Lee Dumas is the founder and host of EO Fire, an award-winning podcast where he interviews today's most inspiring entrepreneurs. I'll ask John the exact number of episodes here in just a moment. He and his team also produce over seven figures a year in revenue. JLD has shown the world the power of podcasting. Prepare to ignite. Welcome, John. Vicki, I am fired up to be here. Thanks for that intro. And I'm now up to 2,600 episodes. All right. That's so amazing. I, John, I want to start out first by saying thank you for your service in the U.S. Army. Thank you. 
I, you and I have chatted a little bit in the hallways at conferences about this before, and I don't expect you to remember that, but <laughs> uh, my dad was a uh, pilot in a B-24 bomber in World War II, and I've spent a lot of time archiving his stories. His second mission was D-Day, and also archiving the stories of my mom. So I just, anytime I'm interacting with somebody who has also served our country, it's so important for me to say that, and on behalf of my parents, too, uh, thank you. Well, we appreciate the appreciation. Yes. Oh, wonderful. One of the other things that I wanted to do is just to say my gratitude for this moment. I am so grateful that you are here. I am grateful for the way, John, that you fold your life experiences into all the amazing resources that you and Kate curate for us on your website out at eofire.com and all the many things that you do with your podcasts and webinars and Podcasters Paradise. So thank you for that. I really am appreciative. Yeah. I'd like to tell you just a few things about my listeners to give you some foundation for the questions that I'm going to ask you. Okay. Sure. My listeners are, they're really interested in future readying their business or their organization Many of them are employees of companies. Some of them are entrepreneurs or marketers wearing, you know, many different hats. Uh, they practice being agile and they are working on listening to their customer. Or sometimes just the flip side of that in that they're in organizations that maybe aren't listening to customers as well as they wish their organization would. And so they're wanting to make a difference in those areas. Last season here on the podcast, Agile Digital Business, I was focused on the voice interface and ways that businesses can be preparing for voice and uses of smart speakers like the Amazon Alexa, the Google Home Assistant, or Apple Siri. Voice brings a lot of different things into the field of search. Here in season three, I'm making a pivot, helping my listeners to kind of up-level their game in delivering content online. So instruction online, improving their engagement in various online vehicles. So this could be engaging in webinars, working with more than one content expert. So think Zoom call where you might have several people that are the experts or conducting Facebook lives. So I work with instructors. I work with ministers. Many folks who are used to the typical classroom or picture the church sanctuary where they're delivering their message or making their presentation. And now suddenly, because of this time we're in during the COVID-19 pandemic, they're going online. And I find you a master at all of that. So I have a couple of questions around that. Sure. So I'd like to start first with the Facebook Live. I know you've done a lot of those, and I've been working with some folks who are pretty new to doing a Facebook Live or engaging with people who are on the Facebook Live with them. So I want to skip the tech piece of it, and let's assume that they have what they need from a technology standpoint. What advice do you have for that person who is looking to keep people on the broadcast and engage with them and not just stop by and then leave in a hurry? Start the live with one intention. You have one intention that you are going to deliver throughout this live. Make it very clear in the title and the description of the Facebook live what your intention is. And don't deviate from that. You should be looking with any Facebook live to be solving one problem. You are looking to create a solution to one specific problem, obstacle, struggle, challenge, whatever that might be. So an example might be, you know, for me, if I was to say, what would my audience really be looking to come and ask me questions about or learn more about? Let's say today I'm going to focus on how to grow your podcast audience. So I'd be very intentional with the title and with the description saying, hey, this is what this Facebook Live is about. I'm going to be talking about one or two very specific tactics about growing your podcast audience. And I'm going to be taking questions and answering specifically questions on that topic, on this intention, on this focus. And then what do I do? I start the live up and I keep the focus there because people are going to come on. They're going to be like, oh, what's your favorite color? Oh, da, 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 da. And be like, listen, 
I respect your question and I'm just not going to be able to address it right now because this is the focus of the Facebook Live, as you can see by the title and description. Let's keep the questions and the focus here. And the beauty of doing that is now you really have a specific intention that you're going to deliver during this Facebook Live. But an additional benefit of doing that is that now you're going to have this piece of video content, whether it be two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, that's on a specific topic. And then you can start to take these different blocks of these different intentions where you're talking about one topic, one struggle, one obstacle, one challenge, you're delivering one solution. And now you can start to combine these together. You can start to congregate them into one specific area. So now when people are going to go, hey, I have a question about, you know, how do I grow my podcast audience? You can say, oh, I actually did a 10 minute training on that. Here's the link. And it's going to take them to that page where not just that training for the 10 minutes on how to grow your podcast audience, but all these other trainings that you've done now, they're going to start to consume more of your content. So instead of just answering one question to one person one time with like one or two sentences, now you're sending them to a plethora of information where you're giving them in-depth solutions to that exact problem they came to you with and giving them quick access to other solutions, other topics, other challenges that you've talked about over the time. So that's a great way to start building up this incredible database of really specific topics and really specific solutions to real deal problems. Okay, thank you. I've got a couple of follow-up questions to that. For the presenter or the instructor who might be used to teaching in a time block, let's say a 50-minute class, and maybe part of that was lecture and part of that was the students working in some small groups or part of it was a guest coming in, would you take that? 50 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever it might be, and break that into, say, three different Facebook Lives or three different Zoom calls? Or would you still keep it all one and move it online? Absolutely break it up. I mean, you're really getting to a cap of 10 minutes where you can have that kind of real, honest communication, like real, honest attendance for that amount of time. When you kind of get over that time frame. It's just not going to work on a medium like a Facebook Live. So cut it down, keep things at 10-minute blocks. That's the cap. And again, if it's three or four minutes, it's three or four minutes, that's fine. But the cap should be 10 minutes. So you know that 50-minute interview where when you take out the 20 minutes of group time, so you maybe have uh, 30 minutes of actual time from that interview, from that you know typical class that they're teaching, mm -hmm. that is what you're going to be cutting down into three segments of 10 each. Okay. All right. This is, this is a question for my uh, musician friends. My husband and I are musicians and play in a seven, we have a seven piece band. So a lot of our friends are doing music online right now because we don't have our venues anymore. Would you do something similar with music? Would you just do, you know, say a 10 minute concert of just a couple of original tunes or would you go ahead and do the 30 minute concert or something longer than 10 minutes? When it comes to music, I would absolutely do something longer. When you're asking people to sit down and look at a screen and be listening and engaging and trying to learn something and have that mental bandwidth happening, like that's where the short time blocks are, are very valuable for Facebook Lives. But hey, when you're doing something that's going to be entertaining people where they're potentially going to be like washing the dishes while they're listening to your music or maybe dancing with each other while they're listening to your music, I mean that can go on, on a much different time plane, uh, time plane. You can have 30, 40, 50 minutes where you're literally doing sets like that, just like we're kind of used to when we go and, and watch bands perform, you know, at different locations and venues. So when it comes to that, absolutely have at it. Just deliver that value. And plus, the longer that you're staying on, there's more likelihood that people are going to kind of be stumbling across you during that time and tuning in. Maybe they're going to be like, sweet, now I know that, this is going to be something that Vicky's going to be doing on a semi-regular basis. I'll subscribe to the notifications. So next time that she goes live, I'll be notified. It's been really interesting for us to watch that kind of thing happen. We've been following your advice, being consistent with when nice. we're delivering the concert. Uh, for us, it's been every two weeks on a Sunday afternoon. And the, it's fun to watch the audience grow. And now it's beyond our regular audience. And we're getting wow. people from around the world coming into our teeny little dining room. That's what we're calling them the tiny farmhouse concert. <laughs> and what are these seven pieces? 
when we're out with the seven piece band, we have uh, Mark Bolter on our sax and Leanna Atwell on keyboard that we do three and four part vocals. So my husband and I both sing, I play accordion and guitar. He's a guitarist and a rhythm guitarist, bass player, Greg Brassy, Stan Wallace on drums and Kevin Ludwig on electric guitar. Dang, that's a full band. Oh, we have so much fun. We've been playing <laughs> together for well over a decade. That's so cool. But fun. Okay. I've got another question for you about, I, I know you're a, a huge believer in audio content. That's a no brainer. I'm curious about a little more detail that maybe you could provide for us about the value of, I'm thinking of specifically your free podcast course and how that was a value bomb I gleaned from your talk at Podcast Movement last August in Orlando. I hadn't thought of taking my book and turning it into a podcast or at least talking about concepts within my book on a podcast and then leaving it as a static podcast rather than adding extra episodes on a consistent basis after I had uploaded the initial ones. Could you talk more on that, like the the value that you see with your company of having audio content out there and available for people in different different forms? So the reality is you've got to put yourself in the position of the people that are going to be searching for this content. Like, what are they going to do? What are they going to be looking for? Like when somebody goes to Apple Podcasts and types in the words podcast course, I want them to find my 20 episode podcast course that starts and finishes with just podcast training. I don't want them to have to like try to cycle and filter through my 2,573 episodes that I've created to find like the couple episodes that I talk about podcasting. So that's key. And that's why you can really look at audio contents and blocks as well. Where you can be like, listen, I'm going to create one series, one set of trainings, one series of episodes that's just going to be a solution to this problem. And then you can go forth with that. And I've seen a lot of authors, as you briefly mentioned, have a lot of success. So you know what? My podcast, uh, sorry, my book is 20 chapters. I'm not going to read every word of these 20 chapters for a podcast. But what if I just do 20 episodes where I say, okay, guys, this is the topic of the, uh, this is the title of the, of the chapter. I'm going to give you just a three to five minute summation of what is going on in this chapter. And if you want to learn more about that, then obviously the audio book or the physical book is going to be there for you. And this is how you can get that. And then having people go and create their podcast of 20 episodes for 20 chapters, that is just essentially this great lead in to somebody that's going to be like, oh, wow, this is a lot of good value. How can I get more? And then the more is obviously the book. Would you recommend that anybody do that who has a book? And I'm guessing it's especially great for the self-help. Or self yeah, there's absolutely no reason not to do this. So thank you for mentioning that in your talk at Podcast Movement. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for being there. Oh, I also just want to say thank you for uh, Podcasters Paradise. I've been a member of your uh, podcasting community for quite a while, and it's been so helpful and allowed me to connect with some other podcasters that have, you know, we've become kind of a support group for each other. So it's been great. Yeah. Well, you should congratulate yourself for being somebody who's willing to invest their time, their efforts and money into learning from others, you know, by going to these conferences, by being in communities like Paradise. I mean, you're doing all the right things. Thank you. It's, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm the one benefiting, but I, <laughs> we I, all uh, are. That's why, that's yeah. why it's so good because we all win. Yes. Am I also an employee? My employer has benefited from me doing that kind of thing as well. I, my, I just get so many neat ideas from interacting in that kind of group. So cool. Well, gosh, John, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your uh, input on these topics. And I speak on behalf of my listeners of my show. They are going to be really, really excited that I've had a chance to talk to you and will also be grateful for what you've shared today. Thank you. It was great chatting, Vicki. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Agile Digital Business. In addition to the podcast, another way that you can stay informed about online coaching groups that I'm starting or new podcast episodes that have been uploaded and other opportunities that I don't want you to miss out on, you can add your email to my email list 
by simply sending an email to vickimaris at getresponse.net. When you send your email to that particular address, your email is automatically added to the list. I'll say that address one more time that you would send your email to, and you don't need to put anything in the subject heading or the body of the email. Just send an email to vickimaris at getresponse.net. Thank you for listening. I hope you will join me now. Let's go out and teach, inspire, and connect.